Home Affairs Sector News, Chats and Trends Sector News, Motoring and Transport Sector News. Hello and welcome to Connect World TV, your world in one village that brings you your news a sector at a time with special know your government, community and environment sector pieces whose compilation is aimed at bringing the people to the government, the government to the people in one person to another. My name is Cassia Kulu. Heading out of Home Affairs Sector News today, the Minister of Home Affairs, Aaron Mutsualedi, brought the leaders of tra the traditional leaders of the various provinces in KwaZulu Natal to discuss marriage policy and of course did they discuss trust me they had much discussion and much to say and of course the issues that were mainly uh, chaired here with it was the issue of the policy and how the communities are led by the traditional leaders can ensure that these marriages are documented let's have a look as the season Kunu reports this for us Aaron Mutualedi, the Minister of Home Affairs, gathered all provincial traditional leaders of the province of KwaZulu Natal to deliver and gain a buy in on the national mandate with reference to the relevant marriage legislation and amendments. According to the Minister, in relation to the current status quo in our rural communities, it is said that the large number of marriages remain undocumented. And I want you to understand this. For a, a, a marriage to be recognized by law, it must appear on the National Population Register of Home Affairs. The National Population Register of Home Affairs is where we register birth that you were born, it's where you will register you when you take an ID, it's where you will register you when you get married, and it's where we register you when you die. But up to today, 342,809 marriages on that national marriage register are registered as customary marriages. The majority of these marriages, 333,387, are registered with one spouse, meaning one partner. Another 8,410 are registered with two spouses. Marriage registered with three spouses to nine spouses. Range from 814 to two. And there's one registered marriage with 10 spouses. So in terms of the act, the definition of a customary marriage is one that is negotiated, celebrated, concluded. And let me explain here. In customary marriages, you can marry away from home affairs. You can do your things alone. Home affairs doesn't have to be there. But if you want that marriage to appear on the National Population Register and hence be recognized in South Africa as a marriage, after getting married, you still have to come to home affairs to register it. So even if it happens, it doesn't matter when it happens. You, but you must kindly register it if you want it on the national population register. If it's not there on the national population register, it's not recognized under the law. In an interview with Connect World TV, the minister disclosed challenges and mapped solutions moving forward.
We speak to the head of social economic development in the province as an important partner to the initiative. Chairman of Limpompo House of Traditional Leaders, Chief Mole Sela Solomon Tikale, had this to say. You made it. You made a celebration with the community. You go to the senior church, sometimes with a bit of peace, preferably ribs from the car. From the car. Then you take them to the senior church. You don't give that to the senior traditional leader as an individual. You give to the people who help the senior traditional leader with some of these, these problems on daily basis in that area. The people in that area will accept that this is a person who was married by a family, who was married by such and such a person, and joins this community. But in the Western way, people don't believe that when you are married, you join a family, and then later you join a bigger community. They don't believe that. They want to be an individual, which is not possible. They want to remain an individual in that area, which is not possible. But in, in some of the cases that have been referred to the House of Chachina Vegas, we got one case. And the judge said, Mawoshi, tell us. Before his father or the father was a senior traditional leader, must this person also be a senior traditional leader? And the community says no. This is Wemkunu, Home Affairs Sector News, reporting for Cornet World TV, Durban. Here are the top eight most influential unions and political parties in South Africa. The role of unions and political parties is to ensure the welfare of its members, protecting the reliability of their trade, and to advocate for the needs of the community. You can get to be a member of any political party or trade union of your choice by simply visiting an office of that particular organization anywhere near you. For more news relating to politics and union sector news, tune on to your preference stop, Connect World Sector News, and hashtag Connect World Sector News on all social media platforms. Well, let's now talk about motoring and transport sector news that we have for you here today. As Nkita Nandolongo attended a conference uh, that takes place annually here in Durban by uh, Ports and Rails, and they aim to discuss the issue of infrastructure, road infrastructure around South Africa and Africa at large. And of course, we've seen the growth of it from 100 delegates to uh, thousands now, and certainly hundreds of exhibitors exhibiting and all conversations speak road and infrastructure let's have a look at this report the annual international ports and rail conference hosted its eighth dmg organized session in partnership with trade and investment kzn a revolution that was launched in 2012 with 100 delegates and presently hosted 700 delegates and 100 exhibitors
The KZN Expo Week is imported and exported focused and is also the third annual Drone Corn International, where Vodacom also exhibited its technology in line with this trendy technology. Um, Vodacom has partner or rather is a key partner to this awesome, awesome two-day event, which in essence is the drone uh, conference. And part of the reason why it is important is because equally we're going through this digital um, evolution uh, within the context of the company as well. In other words, moving from a tech to a technology company. And our stance is that uh, we are certainly a critical, critical member in the conversation around digital transformation, also digital inclusivity. Um, very, very awesome, awesome event really for the past uh, two days. Uh, we had SMMEs, for instance, you know, positioning their capability across the very broad spectrum. Uh, we had government, for instance, really positioning um, their position as well, and equally from my end. And what is very, very interesting is that it certainly uh, goes to indicate that this whole digital uh, inclusion, including in particular the whole drone concept, uh, is right here. And therefore, that calls for a far more broader conversation around it. So, um, insofar as Vodacom is concerned, certainly we've been using the drone concept uh, for a while now, but largely for our operations. That is in terms of assessment of our uh, towers, um, where you don't necessarily need a fiscal as in warm body to climb the tower and check things like your uh, what antenna you have there, the aging of the infrastructure. You utilize the drones so that the resources can then be reskilled and focus into other critical activities that will really help us to advance our business and also operation as well. So we've been using that and we're now moving or migrating into the drone in the commercial sense. And a POC I was done just a few um, months, weeks back in the context of Vodafone, where we showcased uh, for the first time a drone through a network infrastructure where the reliance on line of sight is actually not there uh, from a controller perspective. So these are some of the advancements that we are seeing happening really around the, the drone concepts. And um, hence the um, conversation that we're having, of course, with some of our petitioner, key stakeholders or partners um, in the uh, two days that we had. A very, very important event, I must say, and very critical at local level. Um, and it really talks to the broader goal or slash objective that us as industry have local municipality but also the other entities like UDH group we've done a fantastic job just in arranging or organizing an event of this nature so that equally or collectively we can then advance this digital uh, inclusion component that we are referring to very very important another aspect as well is really around this digital inclusion that we are referring to that at the end of the day you'll need to have an infrastructure on the ground a cause that Vorocom is so so committed to so we are driving broadband connectivity in very deep rural areas a very intentional network expansion program that we've been advancing uh, for longer now and we're very excited truly really, to be boosting more than 99 percent of broadband connectivity in the context of uh, Vorocom uh, as in case and, and also you know leading forward to ensure that those areas that are still slightly under service as equally um, service so that we can all move into this fourth industrial revolution or digital inclusion that we are referring to. So a key partner to an initiative of this nature and we're very very excited that we could have been or we were part uh, of this initiative.
The Department of Transport, regulated under the Transport Act under the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996, as a public body, exists to ensure the following among others. The provision of road infrastructure and maintenance, road traffic enforcement, safety and education in the sphere of road, rail, marine and aviation. In order for the Department of Transport to fully enforce its mandate, it requires the complete cooperation of road users and community at large. Some of the ways in which the people can work with the Department of Transport is to cooperate through adherence to its relevant policies, report any infrastructural, operational and social problems. In relation to more news on motoring and transport, tune in to your stop of preference, Connect World TV, hashtag Connect World TV, hashtag Connect World TV sector news on all social media platforms. of sector news hits South Africa through the shores of Guazulu Natal with each sector's delivery of the most basic and crucial information whose knowledge brings the people to the government, the government to the people, one person to another for better cohesion and prosperity. We come at you Tuesdays and Thursdays 7 a.m. on more KZN TV. Tragedy, and it is something that will happen to all of us but when it happens in the form of brutality and rage by another it leaves the community frightened and it leaves many questions to be answered the fate of death that took over for Simugelo Zondi as a young man as a BCom student at the UK ZN University in Durban is what happened to him and it saddens me saddens you saddens everybody in the community the court is currently uh, the case is currently in court and being detangled by all those involved in it and we'll wait to see what actually will be the results found by the police and the prosecution to the suspect who is currently undergoing a trial in court let's have a look at this report as Andy Satyola reports it for us Kaili Kenzimande, a University of KwaZulu-Natal student, appeared at the Pine Town Magistrate Court in connection to the murder of 25-year-old third-year BCom student Simugelo Zondi. Zondi's lifeless body was found burning in a bush at the Westville campus near a rugby field after the deceased friends had launched a search party after being alerted to his disappearance by his girlfriend. When the burning body was discovered, the suspects were spotted on the scene and ran away. In a video that has since gone viral, Zimande can be seen and heard confessing to the killing and burning of Zondi's body because he believes that he was a zombie and was bewitching him. <laughs> Collecting a it's in our school, Salapans. The school woman, I'm going to go to the house. 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 Zimande lashed out at the magistrate, saying that it is not fair that his family was not informed to come to court for his first appearance and that he cannot make decisions regarding court's representation without his family. Magistrate Robson had to stand the matter down in court to allow the suspect to speak to his family.
It's their duty to inform my family. I can't, I can't come to court by my family. Right. How am I going to make a decision regarding lawyers and stuff? No family. Is, How is, it? is that fair? Please find out if there's The suspect has since refused the use of a legal aid attorney for now and will be remanded into custody until the 21st of October for bail and further investigations. The staff and students of the university gathered for a march against violence following the murder of Zondi. Chancellor and his executive of the university has given the assurance they've actually put out personal confidential email address so that any one of us that feels threatened in any form should communicate directly to the Vice Chancellor's office as we wait. The Department of Education holds the mandate and standards guiding for the execution of education to individuals of the state as a basic right expressed in terms of Section 29 of the Constitution and ensure the utilization of the prescribed curriculum. Among others, it also holds the following responsibilities to provide educational resources such as stationery, computers, learning facilities, educators and personnel. Communities can engage with the Department of Education through adhering to its set standards of operation applicable to students, service providers and educators respectively to ensure compliance and also by reporting any suspicious or fraudulent activities. For more news in relation to education sector news, tune in to your preference stop connect to our sector news, hashtag connect well sector news on all social media platforms. Here with your chats and trends sector news. Former President Jacob Zuma still remains in the fore as the conversation that people are chatting and trending about on social media with his 14-year case on going corruption, a case that uh, began some 14 years back. He recently tried to uh, make an application to have these charges dismissed. Uh, claiming that there was political interference and these charges or rather his application was thrown out of court in Peter Maritzburg on the 11th and he is expected in court with his co-accused his co the French company Tails on the 22nd of November so we will watch closely and report back to you. While well, the people of South Africa and KwaZulu Natal continue conversation around Zandile Gumete, former mayor of Etigwini municipality, who stepped down untimely a few weeks ago over the issue of the 208 million rand fraud and corruption charge labeled against her from a tender that was awarded in 2016. Recently, the Hawks confiscated about 14 cars, 10 houses from her, and of course, she and her co accused are on an ongoing trial.
numerous of its kind dose of sector news hits South Africa through the shores of Guazulu Natal with each sector's delivery of the most basic and crucial information whose knowledge brings the people to the government, the government to the people, one person to another for better cohesion and prosperity. We come at you Tuesdays and Thursdays 7 a.m. on 1KZN TV. This indeed remains my least favorite time of the day where I have to say goodbye to all of you good people and thank you for having watched yet another edition of Connect World TV Sector News right here on our online platform Connect World TV on www.cw-tv.net or you can just simply say Connect World TV, we are definitely known by Google Online. Follow us and trend as we are hashtag Connect World TV, hashtag Connect World TV Sector News. Thank you so much for having joined us and do watch yet another edition as we come your way on this particular channel at 7 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thank you so much. Good morning, South Africa.